Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at GRE tunnels, the benefits of using them and then how we can configure them on our Cisco devices. This video forms part of the CCMP Enterprise Core Exam Series 350-401. The exam topic covered as part of this video is 2.2b, which is to configure and verify GRE tunneling. As part of this video, I'm also going to be including the GNS3 lab that we're going to be using as part of the video. If you'd like to follow along whilst we work on the lab, you can download the lab using the link in the description. So, first things first, GRE stands for Generic Routing Encapsulation. What this allows us to do is encapsulate packets inside another packet that then allows them to be forwarded over an IP network. A good example of this being shown on the screen now. Here we've got two sites connected to the internet via an ISP, Site A and Site B. As both sites are connected to the internet and not directly connected via MPLS or other means, this means at present Site A's subnet of 192.168.10.0 is unable to route to site B's 192.168.20.0 subnet across the internet. The reason for this is that we cannot route our private addresses across the internet. One way of working around this could be to use a GRE tunnel. What this will do is allow us to create a point-to-point -point connection between site A and site B. The GRE tunnel will allow the two sites to communicate with each other as if they were directly connected. It does this by forming a logical tunnel between the two and acts as if they're layer 2 adjacent. The traffic is now able to be routed across the internet as the traffic will be routed via a new GRE packet that includes the original packet within it, allowing it to be routed. An example of this can be seen on the screen now. We can see the original packet here and then how it looks once it's been encapsulated within a GRE packet. So as we've mentioned already, GRE tunnels are used to create a simple point-to-point -point connection between two network nodes. In addition to this, GRE is a tunneling protocol that was developed by Cisco. Before we continue, it's worth noting that by default, traffic traversing through a GRE tunnel is not encrypted. If we want to encrypt the traffic that's routing through the GRE tunnel, we need to make use of IPsec, which we'll take a look at in the next video. Some benefits that GRE provide are that first of all, GRE tunnels are defined as an RFC standard, number 2784. The great thing about this is that it means that GRE tunneling is supported by most vendors, therefore allowing us to tunnel traffic between devices of different vendors. This is great as we might have hardware from different vendors throughout the network we might need to tunnel traffic between. In addition to this, the great thing about GRE tunnels is that they support the encapsulation of broadcast and multicast traffic. What this then allows us to do is run routing protocols across the GRE tunnel to form neighbour relationships and route traffic via the GRE tunnel. Finally, the great thing you'll see when we get into the configuration of our GRE tunnel is that the configuration is super simple and really easy to deploy. Despite all of the amazing benefits that GRE tunnels provide us, there are unfortunately some downsides to GRE tunnels. First of all, by default, traffic traversing our GRE tunnel is not encrypted and instead sent by clear text. As such, this provides a significant security issue. This can be resolved with the use of IPsec, which we'll take a look at in the next video. In addition to this, as we have to manually create each tunnel with a source and destination, along with the tunnel being point to point, they can start to easily become difficult to manage if we start to have a lot of GRE tunnels. So now that we understand GRE tunneling, let's take a look at how we can configure it on our Cisco devices. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the same topology we discussed previously. So you can see we have two sites connected to our ISP with public IP addresses for each location. Behind each of these sites has its own subnet, so site A we're using 192.168.10.0 and site B we're using 192.168.20.0. So what we're going to do in the lab is create a GRE tunnel between the two sites to connect them and allow them to act as if they're directly connected. For the tunnel itself we need an IP address for each end on the same subnet, so in this scenario we're going to be using 172.16.0.0.24. So now we understand our lab setup, let's go over to GNS3 and start the configuration. The lab that we're going to be using can be found in the description below if you want to follow along and work on it with the video. To save some time I've already configured our interfaces on all the routers and then configured a default route on both site A and site B's routers to use the ISP as their default route. I'll show you this now by running a quick show IP interface brief on the routers and a show IP route. So first of all on site A if we do a show IP interface brief you can see our serial 2 interface connected to our ISP with our public IP address. We can also see our subnet for site A sat behind a loopback interface. If I jump over to site B and do the same thing, again you can see serial 2 slash 1 connected to our ISP this time and a public IP address, and site B's local subnet sat behind a loopback interface. If I jump back over to site A again quickly and do a show IP route, with this you can see our only route is to route everything via our ISP, and the same with site B. 
So the problem with our setup at the moment, as we've discussed, is that we cannot route our private addresses across the internet. As such, we'll create our GRE tunnel to allow us to do this. First of all, I'll ping site B from site A to confirm that we can route to it over the internet. Which we can do just fine. OK, so the first thing we'll do is go into configuration mode on site A. And the first thing we need to do is create a tunnel interface for our GRE tunnel. We can do this using the interface tunnel command. We can have more than one tunnel interface on our devices, so we'll give this number one. Next up, we need to specify the source interface of our GRE tunnel. Now this will be the interface that will be used to reach the remote end of the tunnel. So in this case, it'd be serial 2 slash 0. Next up, we need to tell the router where we want to terminate our remote end of the tunnel. We can do this using the tunnel destination command, followed by the public IP address of the remote router 82.122.36.1. Once that's been done, we then need to assign our tunnel interface an IP address so that we can communicate across it. Following the topology on the screen, I'm going to be using 172.16.0.1 slash 24 in this example. Once that's been completed, we do also have the option to configure additional configuration on our tunnel if required. These can include MTU, Keeper Lives and Bandwidth. However, we'll leave this for now as they're not required for the example. We'll now exit out of configuration mode on router A and that's the configuration done on site A. So this time we'll jump over to site B and create our tunnel interface on this router. This time we'll amend the tunnel source and destination and tunnel IP address to reflect the topology shown on the screen. Once completed, again I'll exit out of configuration mode, and that's all of our GRE configuration completed. The next step for us to complete is to confirm that our GRE tunnel is up. We'll do this by running a quick show IP interface brief on router B, and we can see here that our tunnel 1 interface is up. Again we'll do this on router A to confirm the tunnel interface is up at this end as well. Which it is as well, which is great. So next up, we'll ping the remote end of the GRE tunnel from router A, which will be 172.16.0.2, which works great. So that's now proved that our GRE tunnel is up and active, and we've got communication between the two locations via the tunnel. This is all great, however. If I do a show IP route, you'll see that we still can't actually route between the local subnets at each site, as traffic would hit the default route and try to route via the internet, which will display as undeliverable. If I do a quick ping to router B's remote subnet, you'll see that here. So how do we get around this then? Well we've got two options, we either set up static routes for the local subnets at each site and route them via the tunnel, or the better option would be to use a routing protocol, which is one of the benefits of using GRE tunnels, as it allows us to use routing protocols across the tunnel. As such, let's jump into our configuration mode again and apply some quick ERGRP configuration. I'll use ERGRP process 10 in this example, and then advertise my networks at site A. Next up, I'll jump across to router B and repeat the process to bring up ERGRP between the sites. Now the configuration has been completed, you can see via the syslog messages on the screen the ERGRP neighbourship has been formed. However, we'll double check this by using a show IP ERGRP neighbourships. Here you can see that we've got a neighbourship formed with site B. If we then run a show IP route, we should now see our remote subnet being advertised via our tunnel interface, which we can. What I'll do is just ping this to confirm routing is now working, which it is just fine. Just before we go back to the slides, we can confirm that our tunnel is a GRE interface by running the show interface tunnel one command. So you can see on the screen now, our current setup of the GRE lab. We've got our GRE tunnel connected and active between site A and site B, with the ERGRP advertising the networks across it to allow us to communicate between the sites. One problem that I wanted to show you that can occur if you're not careful with the networks you advertise is an issue called recursive routing. So at the moment, site A knows how to route to the public IP address of site B. It needs to route by the ISP on the internet to reach it, as shown here. However, what happens if we accidentally advertise our public interface on site B's end via ERGRP? 
So A will then learn this via EIGRP, and as it's a more specific route than our default route, it will then try to route to the public IP address via the tunnel, as you can see here. The problem with this, however, is that we can't actually route to the public IP address via the tunnel, so the tunnel drops. When the tunnel drops, it also removes the route we learned for Site B's public IP address. So what it does is revert back to the default route we had before on the router. This then allows Site A to route to Site B's public IP address again and bring the tunnel up. As soon as the tunnel is up, however, we'll learn the specific route for the public IP address of Site B again, which again will drop the tunnel. This then gets us stuck in a situation where the tunnel is constantly coming online and then dropping off again, until the issue is fixed. Along with this, a message is displayed informing us that the router has detected recursive routing, as shown on the screen now. The way to avoid this from happening is to not advertise the public network across the tunnel. Once the network advertisement is removed from router B, the issue will be resolved. And there we have it, that's a complete overview of GRE tunnels, how we configure them on our devices, and verify the configuration. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Apart from that, remember to subscribe and like the video for more CCMP Enterprise videos. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.